Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders radio network. And we're here on this Thanksgiving weekend with the amazing Lori LeBay from Alzheimer Speaks. And we're talking about caregivers. We're also celebrating all of the awareness that Rosalind Carter made on the, you know, the influence of caregiving. And, you know, I want to take this segment. And for those of you watching our show on YouTube, um, we have a slide up right now that will give you a lot of information about family caregiving and who they are and what they do. And so just a little bit, Lori, um, you're looking at this list and should, do you want to help go through this list with me? Yeah, I just think this is so important. People have no idea that there's close to 60 million family caregivers. I mean, that number is astonishing and that's just here in the U S right. Right. I mean, that's a lot. It's something that we don't talk about. So we don't really know no. who's doing what, you know, once they're in their house. Well, and I always think that, you know, 10,000 baby boomers are turning 65 every each and every day. And if you take our, you know, our generation, which is born between 46 and 64, um, those individuals, me being a boomer, we're, we're going to be 15 years from now, all in the, you know, facing, you know, have somebody taking care of us and the Gen Ys and the, Gen X, you know, those, those generations are going to have to deal with this huge segment of the population, which is the baby boomers. Um, I remember in just in my um, research that by the age of year 2030, um, this is a side note, um, close to 40% of the population will be over the age of 65. That's wow. crazy, crazy. <laughs> That's so, a lot. So yes, so close to 60 million family caregivers in the USA, one in five provide unpaid care. So that means they get no money whatsoever. Some people, and that if you're living for free, that is con actually considered quote unquote paid care because you're provided for um, if you're live-in type help. But this is a lot of things when you look at this statistics, it's pretty crazy that 20% of those individuals and it's you know, what do they do if they're if they're sitting alone taking care of a loved one and they don't have any income, their life can spin out of control pretty quickly. Oh, absolutely. And people don't realize the cost and where it all draws from. So it might be you, it, you know, some caregivers move into a loved one's house or whoever they're yeah. for. Some have them move into their home. Some are transporting back and forth. And you've got time and mileage, wear and tear on the car, but you are picking up prescriptions and a lot of times paying for those same with groceries. Yeah. Um, there can be legal things. I mean, there's, there are so many things yeah. that you end up paying for that you don't, you just like, you just pick it up because it's, mm -hmm. it's, um, sometimes less work than trying to get reimbursed for it. You know, and I also think about, um, wives or mm -hmm. husbands, partners, um, a spouse, uh, you know, oftentimes they have to leave their job to take care of their loved one. And what happens with that is, is they lose out on long-term care benefits. They lose out on all different types of pension uh, type, you know, buildup that they have. Uh, me, I had to cash out my IRA um, early <laughs> because I had to function while I was taking care of my mom. So absolutely, there are all kinds of aspects to this whole phenomena of caring for a loved one. Um, and you know, here, here's another one, 64% women um, are family caregivers. You know, when I first started, it was 90% women. So men are really starting to step up. That's kind of an interesting statistic I learned lately. Well, and, you know, why is that, I think is also an interesting thing, too. There's more divorce. 
Mm -hmm. And so a husband might not have a wife because the wife used mm -hmm. to step in and kind of take on that role, mm -hmm. you know, for the family, not always, mm -hmm. but it's really nice to see uh, men stepping in. And some of them I think are just husbands, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I see so many husbands caring for their wives with dementia, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, just alone. And I think, uh, you know, there's a little more support. We're starting to see more support groups out there just for men, too, sure. because they care different than, yeah. than women do at times. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to see that coming more into balance. True, true. Now, here's another one. 50% of our 60 million caregivers spend an average of 20 hours per week in caregiving. Now I think about you spend 40 hours a week in a job, another 20 hours a week in caregiving, that's 60 hours. Um, just not even having any time for yourself. And that's 50%. Um, that to me is so, you know, amazing when how many of those of us that have family members that may say oh yeah m my sister takes care of my dad or you know my my mom is taking care of you know my my grandmother or whatever that is but the time factor is just overwhelming what do you think about that how how, are you, how do you see that people ju try to juggle that well and I think in some ways those hours are low uh, well, exactly. <laughs> for, for many. And and what I think a lot of times what families don't realize is when one person is doing it, how heavy that burden can be. Mm -hmm. And not that they don't want to do it, but I mean, physically, mentally, you know, emotionally, mm -hmm. financially, it's a lot. And if, if those right. hours can be split up, mm -hmm. it's easier on everyone. Right. Um, and but it says here uh, that 20% spend an average of 50 hours per week. Yep. Now, that to me is crazy. That's more than a full-time job. And I will tell you how many of them are unpaid a ton. Yep. Well, and a lot of them have to because, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they can't afford to put somebody in a community. I mean, there, there's a huge huge kind of donut hole and mm -hmm. if that's going to we're going to we're going to see that slap us in the face as a right. country really quickly right. here. Um and they, they just can't afford it. So family has to step in right? and care. And really, it's not even 50 hours. I mean, it's your whole week because right. most care partners will say, someone will say, well, what do you like to do? And they'll go, oh, I don't know. I haven't thought about <laughs> myself for so long. Yeah. So everything they're doing is for someone sure. else or to run the household. Yeah. And then thinking about too, 80% of major decisions involving a loved one's care, uh, legal options, uh, financials, everything like that, 80% of them are involved in major decisions and 75% are actually the primary power of attorney for financial, legal, and healthcare. So they're, they're making monumental decisions on behalf of their loved ones. Um, you know, I remember laying at wake at night thinking, you know, I had to make a huge decision for my mom. I remember that. And that was, you know, I would spend a night tossing and turning, feeling like I didn't have all the facts. Yeah, it's important to have those conversations early on. So yeah. Lori and I, we're going to be right back. In the meantime, you can reach Lori LeBay at alzheimersspeaks.com. We at Answers for Elders thank you for listening. Did you know that you can discover hundreds of podcasts in our library on senior care? So visit our website and discover our decision guides that will help you also navigate decision making. Find us at AnswersForElders.com.